Hi everyone, welcome to the 35th webinar in 12D's training webinar series. My name is Lisa Stewart and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator here at 12D Solutions. 12D's training webinars showcase common industry challenges, taking a close look at industry best practices and how these can be implemented using 12D products. The aim of these webinars is to upskill 12D users and broaden their understanding of the capabilities of 12D products. We run these webinars regularly and record them for posting through our website and on YouTube. The first 34 webinars from this training series, as well as the 31 webinars from our Industry Solutions series, are available on our YouTube channels if you missed those. During this live presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way. We'll put some instructions on the screen. We'll answer as many as possible of those throughout the webinar. And at the end, I'll read out some of your questions to the presenter for his insights, if there's time. Today's webinar on drainage plan plot will be presented by Owen Thornton, who has been writing software for 12D Solutions since 2003. Owen has over 15 years of professional experience in the civil and mining industries. He is the original author of 12D's Drainage Network Editor and the Drainage Analysis Module and is a 12D specialist in drainage, utilities, plot parameter files, survey conformance, volumetrics, and system setup. This webinar will demonstrate the many new features of the Drainage Plan Plot PPF Editor and the example PPFs installed in the library folder in 12D Model 12. Techniques for producing outputs for multiple drawings with different frame rotations will be shown on the way to producing PDFs of drainage plans. The Drainage Plan Plot PPF Editor is unique among the PPF editors in 12D model, and some of its non-plotting applications will also be discussed. Over to you, Owen. Thank you, Lisa. Hello, everyone. Uh, so today's uh, webinar is a special one on the single option, the drainage plan plot, which is a little bit special amongst all of the uh, plot parameter file editors inside 12D model. And we'll be covering a few different things that we obviously won't be able to cover every little thing about this option in a single hour. Uh, but you can see on the screen there, I've got a couple of examples, two different kinds of plots it can produce. And this is specifically for stormwater, but it has other applications as well. In this case, on the left-hand side, we have an example of quite a detailed plot showing a lot of information that you might be using and find useful while you're in the middle of the design phase, just to visualize and see the numbers that are coming out of your model when you run stormwater analyses. Uh, and it could also be used for internal verification uh, of jobs to uh, check that everything is as expected. On the right hand side, we see a, a somewhat more simple example, the kind of thing that ends up on um, final drawings, production drawings. Um, a lot of times the, the, the drainage plans don't have a huge amount of information on them other than the basic structure names and maybe the pipe sizes and they might also have a catchment plan on them. A lot of the times the, uh, the real details are put on long sections or in calculation tables or in reports uh, and things like that. Uh, but we'll have a look at both of these and try and produce uh, drawings at the end of the day uh, that show examples of both and maybe a few other things as well. So before we really get into it, what is so special about the drainage plan plot? Why are we having a special webinar on it? We've had another web webinars in the past on PPF editors in general. Why does this one deserve a unique one? Well, the main thing about it is that it, unlike all the others, it doesn't really produce a plot. It doesn't plot to paper space. It plots in world coordinates uh, because it's really just labeling a drainage model. Uh, and it can, in some cases, label it in three dimensions and have Z values as well. It does only plot to model. It can't um, plot directly to DWG or to PDF or whatever. We need to subsequently um, plot it out of 12D. And it's normally just a component uh, on a drawing. Uh, and you might include other things like contours and road design strings and catchment plans. Uh, as well as the output from the drainage plan plot PPF editor, 
uh, and then plot all that using either a quick sheet plot or the plot frame PPF editor or even the, the newer multi-page plot sheets options. Um, uh, and of course, for anyone using AutoCAD, uh, typically it is the um, output from the drainage plan plot that is exported to DWG for plans assembled in AutoCAD rather than exporting the original drainage model because AutoCAD doesn't have a drainage string. And, and so when you do export a drainage model to AutoCAD, you don't get anything that really looks like a drainage model at the other end. So you're much better off learning, even for DWG, using and learning how to use the drainage plan plot uh, because that is the way to get that information out to AutoCAD. Okay, with that out of the way, I'll show you now uh, a list of example plot parameter files that are currently installed with version 12. Now, many of these um, have been installed for many versions in the past. The, the drainage plan plot is not a new option, but it does get revised, uh, typically each new version of 12D. And we've got four new plot parameter files that I've highlighted in blue here, these two and these two that are new additions to version 12 and installed in the library. All of these files you'll find installed in the library, which is typically uh, this folder path here under Program Files, 12D Model 12 Library. Okay, now I am mainly going to focus on these highlighted ones, the new ones, and I'll just briefly describe the difference between these four. The first two, called Drainage Design and Drainage Design BCC, are primarily for use when you're analysing a stormwater network with the rational method. Okay, and the difference between the ordinary one and the Brisbane City Council one is that one is set up for using our standard drainage.4D file, which is a fairly generic file, um, and the other one is set up for use with the Brisbane City Council drainage.4d file, which is not generic, it's actually specific to um, most of the pits that get used throughout Queensland. Okay, and that's the one uh, I'll be demonstrating mainly because it just happens to be the pits that I'm using in the project that I'll be showing uh, are the Brisbane City Council pits. Okay, so these two are for the rational method. So they're not appropriate for if you're doing a dynamic design and we have other ones um, in the list here. Uh, that are more appropriate for the dynamic drainage, because, primarily because they are set up to plot different attributes on the uh, pits and the pipes. Uh, and the dynamic uses a different set of attributes from the rational method. So we probably one day might put the word rational in there to make that a bit clearer. But another thing we're starting to do with these newer PPFs is if you look in the notes branch of the actual PPF editor, we are trying to better document the plot parameter files to say exactly what each one is for because the list is growing and there are a lot in this list and they all have different purposes. For instance, the other ones up the top here, these drainage depth ones, they're not really designed for plan drawings at all. These are for producing 3D strings along your uh, drainage pipes that represent the depth of the critical depth of flow or the hydraulic grade line or the normal depth of flow. And these are the sorts of strings that it produces that you could add to a section view to show on uh, overlaid on top of the drainage string in section view what the critical and normal depth are uh, and, and compare it with the HDL and things like that. Likewise, similarly, this, these two here, drainage inverts and drainage obverts, uh, they are just going to take, make copies of the drainage pipes uh, with strings that are set to the levels of the pipe inverts or the pipe obverts, and they have various applications as well. There's one in here called Drainage Setout, which is designed to create a setout model that a surveyor could use to go and construct and set out a, uh, a drainage network. There's a couple of various uh, simple ones there for doing simple kinds of naming, and a couple of specialist ones at the bottom as well, Drainage Bypass, DWS, which stands for Dynamic Water Supply, which is a new module in version 12, and uh, Sewer Attractive Force, which is a particular um, sewer design method that is embedded into the Three Waters modules. So yes, there's a wide range of applications here, and it's not just for stormwater, it could be for sewer, it could be for water distribution, 
And in fact, it could be for many different kinds of service networks. They don't have to be gravity services. They can be non-gravity and they don't even have to be wet. They can be dry. You can model electrical conduits or service trenches using the drainage model or the drainage string. And there are advantages to doing it that way because you have access to different so-called link types and node types if you have junctions where different trenches meet and different things go different ways and all of that, you can do that. And also the grading of drainage strings uh, is quite well controlled in terms of setting cover levels and depths and things like that. So yes, not all of these plots are for plan drawings at the end of the day and they might not end up on drawings at all. At the end of the day, this this is a really, it's not really a plotter, the drainage plan plot, it is a drainage model labeler and it can do all sorts of different things. Okay, so again, I'll be highlighting uh, or mainly showing off the two Brisbane City Council uh, PPFs that I've highlighted here. The difference between the design ones and the plan ones, well the plan ones actually can be used regardless of whatever analysis method. So whether that's rational or dynamic or neither of the above, these can still be used to produce um, the typical kinds of annotations you see on your final drawings. So things with the, uh, the bubbles and just the, uh, the, for the structure names and the uh, pipe sizes um, for, the, for the pipes and, and typically not much more than that. Still shows the symbols and the pipes themselves and all of that. Um, uh, but that's the difference there. So they're, they're very similar PPFs, the design versus the plan ones. Um, but this one basically shows less information uh, and more appropriate for uh, the kinds of finished drawings that people tend to need to produce for their jobs. So before we even start to think about drawings though, uh, I'm just going to recommend the use of the drainage plan plot in general. In general, anytime you're doing drainage design, I get a lot of drainage projects sent to me uh, as part of my support duties at 12D. And I, more often than not, when I see the project sent to me, I realize that they haven't yet even produced a drainage plan plot. And they're asking me what the problem is. And the first thing I do in all these instances is always produce a drainage plan plot of their model because it provides me with so much more visual information at a glance. So in the top here, this is what a typical drainage model looks like when it's on a plan view. And I've got some design strings, road design strings underlaid there in these uh, subdued colors. But the orange string there is the drainage string. And by default, all you get are the structure names showing up as text labels there. With a drainage plan plot, for example, this is just one example of it, but a pretty good one for specifically for the rational method, you can see all this extra information. And it is a great way to uh, check for and troubleshoot networks that are um, doing things that you may not be able to understand. So immediately now with a drainage plan plot, you can see the flow direction, you can see the pit types and the, you know, the lintel, the orientation and the rotation of the uh, pit how it relates to the road design. You can see the set out point, that's that little uh, blob you can see here and here and here. Uh, and is that correct? You can see the pipe sizes labeled. You can see the length and the grades of the pipes here. And you can see the hydraulic results here, basically the flow rate in the pipes and all the hydrology flow rates and hydrology factors like pit loss factors and inlet efficiencies and things like that. And again, the plan plot is customizable you can show more information or less information depending on precisely what you're interested in. Okay, so the first step before we even think about drawings is to set up your plan view so that you have a plan plot overlaid on your drainage model. And a good tip is to turn off this default text on the drainage model first. So I'll just demonstrate that quickly. I'll jump into 12D. And look, I've got a project all set up here. I've got this nice, beautiful uh, perspective view and everything's modeled in 3D and I've got crossing services and I've uh, got contours and translucent tints and all of that. But we're talking about the plan plot. And if I move over to my plan plot, uh, sorry, to my drainage plan view, I should say, this is what a drainage model looks like in plan by default. And we want to get um, typically, there is a need to add some extra information onto a plan view 
whether it needs to go out to a drawing or not. So the first thing is with just this drainage model on the view, and my drainage model is called DR, and by the way, the different colours I've used here are indicating different things. I've used this orange colour to indicate proposed lines, so lines that are to be built. The magenta lines here are drainage lines that are existing, that I'm tying into, and the white drainage lines here are waterways, cha open channels, creeks, swales, and I've also got one over here that's um, a, a, a small collection of bypass nodes as well. So I've used colour for, ver for particular purposes, and I've also got a naming convention uh, for my structures where um, pits that begin with, or structures that begin with L uh, are for part of my longitudinal drainage system. And it, look, it might seem a little bit obscure at the moment, so I could add on my design model, which is uh, my road design strings. Might send that to the back, like so. Uh, and so this is part of my longitudinal system, and LP strings are longitudinal proposed. Uh, and flowing in down here to an LE string, which is a longitudinal existing, the magenta line here, and that ends up going down to this basin. I've also got strings that begin with a letter T in this example, and um, so my transverse system or cross drainage, I've got a transverse proposed culvert there flowing into a channel. Now the channels are also connected to or part of the same strings as these culverts in this instance where I've got a channel in between two culverts. And this is an existing culvert in magenta with a TE prefix. So you get the idea. And my waterways um, have got a W prefix. So I've, I've been thoughtful about the colours I've used and I've been thoughtful about the structure names. I have a very well-defined structure naming convention for my headwalls, my upstream headwall, rather than having a number like a pit, pit number, it has the letter A for the upstream and B for the downstream. And that is actually a, a convention that is used in, in um, some parts of the world uh, and continues to be used, I believe. So it's, it's not just something I've made up. It does have a precedent there. Uh, but the first thing I do, rather than just look at the structure names, is I come to the toggle icon on my, on my view and move my mouse down to string text, hover right on the little black arrow there, and just for the drainage model, I right click on the state um, cell there, and I get an option view off or on. I wanna turn the text, the string text for the drainage model off. And as soon as I do that, all those structure labels disappear. And I wanna now turn on a drainage plan plot. Now, you could just go straight to the plot menu and do this and go to drainage plan, or you could set up through the network editor a drainage plan plot. If I open up the drainage network editor and load in my drainage model, I can go to the plot button and see, in fact, there is already a drainage plan PPF set up for this one. Uh, and it's set up to plot my drainage model called DR to a model of plan annotations called DR labels using this particular PPF file. Now, this is one that's based on the one that's in the library that I mentioned earlier. And uh, I can just go ahead and hit the plot button now. And I'll come in and add that model on top of my drainage model. So, you know, click on the plus and add on the DR labels. And suddenly I've got a lot more information there. Okay, if I zoom right in to uh, where we were looking before, I can see I've got all this extra information, including flow arrows and all the symbols and the set out points uh, and so forth, and all the hydrology and hydraulic information uh, throughout. Now, I have already pre-processed the output of this, and I'm gonna show you how to do this on another example later on. But um, that is the first step, I guess, uh, in just encouraging people to use the drainage plan plot, even if it's not for drawing production, just while you're using the drainage network editor and editing drainage strings, because you've got the option to produce so much more information uh, on, uh, on the screen, which makes it a lot easier to check whether things are going well or not, where things are going wrong, where you need to do some work. 
because you've got a lot more feedback visually on the screen. Okay, so back to the PowerPoint. Um, I'll now talk a little bit about some of the new features in the version 12 PPF editor uh, before we actually go and um, use it in anger and, and produce something a little bit more interesting. Um, and so rather than, uh, there's about 10 items that I've listed here and rather than me just talking over the top of this while this slide is up, I'm actually going to take you through in 12D through the PPF editor and the branch structure that I see here and show you where each of these items uh, can be found effectively. So back to 12D, I'll open up the PPF editor for this one and in fact I could do it from the plot menu, I could go to plot, edit binary PPFs, edit drainage plan and go straight to that or I've still got my plot panel from the network editor open, I can just click on the folder icon here and select open and that opens up the PPF editor there. And this is what it looks like. So I'll just open it up a little bit so we can see all the branches. And so on the main page, this is the main page here where it says drainage plan plot and all of the details on the right hand side. Um, the first thing on the list there was inclusion and exclusion masks for string names. Now this was a uh, feature that's going to be very handy I think. What it means is you can, by using your string naming convention wisely within your drainage model for instance, you can say well actually I don't want to um, plot any of my drainage strings that begin with the prefix WB which in my case uh, is the string code I used for um, bypass nodes and you often don't want to plot those for instance. So typing in WB star there says or well, any string in the model that I find in the drainage model that begins with that prefix I'm not going to bother plotting through here. Likewise I could say well I might only be interested in strings that begin with A, not that I have any in this case, I could just type in A star there and it will only plot the um, strings beginning with A. Now by default if you leave them blank, everything is included and nothing is excluded. So it's up to you if you want to use them to add things in there. Perhaps not quite so useful, but a couple of people have asked for this over the years. Occasionally people model very short strings and they don't necessarily feel an urge to plot them out because it creates just a tiny little stub somewhere. You can specify a, uh, a distance there, you might say any string shorter than three metres say and it simply will check the length of the string and say well I'm not going to bother plotting that, it's too short. Okay, So that's up your sleeve as well. As well as the string name masks for exclusion, we also have on the pipes branch the ability to exclude certain pipes out of the string um, based on their pipe type and again similarly you could, this one is not based on string name, it's based on the pipe type and you can type in multiple pipe types, you might have another pipe type you might want to um, uh, filter out saying um, channel or something like that or channel um, auto if you're using that one for instance and I've used the, the question mark there to mimic a space, um, if you've got spaces in your pit names use the question marks for the spaces but you can list however many pipe types there that um, you might want to exclude or not plot and there are various reasons why you might not want to plot things um, because it just reduces cl un unnecessary clutter on the, on the plot. Similarly on the maintenance holes or pits tab if you like branch we have a um, manhole type mask for exclusion and again we can exclude pits as well or manholes or structures from the plot based on their, um, based on their manhole type. So they're uh, welcome additions. Back to the main page, um, another big addition and possibly the most work in fact for all of the changes to version 12 was the text units. Previously the drainage plan plot only ever plotted in world text or plotted the text in world text and that was okay if you knew what scale you ultimately wanted to plot things in um, but if you didn't uh, or if the, if the scale ever changed um, you'd have to come in and change all of your text sizes throughout the PPF. So we now support paper text 
and as well as being able to plot all, um, all the text as papers text units, we also have a global text factor in here. And I've set mine in this example to 1.25, and I can tell you that all throughout this PPF, this particular PPF, I've set all the text sizes to be one unit. That means that that one unit gets multiplied by the 1.25, and with the paper units, that becomes 1.25 millimetres on paper. If I changed it to world text, it would be 1.25 metres in world coordinates. The advantage of paper scale text is that you, don't, you can change the scale and the text gets bigger and, and, and smaller, but it remains the same size in millimetres. Okay, so that global text factor multiplies all of the text factors and it's a great way if you wanted to double the size of your text, you just come in here and change that to 2.5 uh, and your text gets twice as big basically. A um, couple of other things, um, all throughout the um, network, uh, the drainage plan plot I should say, there are colours, colour boxes to specify what colour do you want this element or what colour do you want that element. And in this PPF, I have removed all of the colours because a new feature in, um, in version 12 is that if you don't specify a colour, uh, if it's a pipe element for instance, all of the stuff under the pipes branch will, will adopt the colour of the original drainage pipe because individual pits and pipes can be coloured or they or they or will default to the colour of the original drainage string. Previously, if you left the colour blank or unspecified here, it would have a hardwired colour uh, in the plotting code, but that has been removed and it now defaults to the drainage one. And so these colours that I've been careful to use on my original drainage model have been able to come through to the actual drainage plan plot result as well. And that's, that's uh, advantageous in the way I'm choosing to use colour. So it's another option up your sleeve. Um, if I move on to the, oh, I'm already on the pipe size labels branch, there's another mode here, the circular pipe mode. And that allows us to place a diameter symbol like this little um, number here, the, the circle with a stroke through it, the diameter symbol. Uh, you can place it now just on the, um, the pipe size labels for circular pipes only. It won't show on box culverts and trapezoidal drains and things like that. So that's a handy one to know about. Uh, moving on, uh, under the maintenance holes branch, the name bubbles branch which was previously outside here and the flow arrows in fact, the flow arrows and the bubbles were previously outside on, on another branch. These have been moved into uh, either the pipes branch for the flow arrows or the maintenance holes branch for the bubbles uh, because it's a more logical structure. Uh, and for the bubbles, we now have a number of new modes here to say what sort of bubble. Previously, you could just draw a circle around the uh, structure name. Now we allow you to uh, specify a symbol of whatever shape you like. And there is a special mode here called upper lower symbol, which is uh, a bit unique to the, to, um, the style uh, often seen in parts of Queensland. And uh, you can just use the new uh, text border functionality and place a, a text border around it as well. So you've got a few options up there, uh, up your sleeve for producing bubbles uh, around structure names. Um, and there has been a bit of work done on the, uh, if I go to the maintenance holes branch, and this is the branch where you specify what uh, symbols you want to use. And if I look at any of the, uh, the symbol columns here, if I right click in there, under 12D uh, drainage, there's a symbol group called 12D drainage. We've revamped and restructured um, this symbol group um, and made it a lot easier to find. And all of the road pit uh, symbols have been simplified and generalized a little bit. So we have, for instance, G2L is an on-grade um, uh, pit with a two meter or two point something meter lintel uh, with a left entry and there's the right entry version of it and there's uh, SAG variants as well. Now all of these um, pits uh, are new and they're being used by uh, this particular drainage plan pot. If I scroll further down I can see the G2Ls and, and S2Ls and so forth for the different pit types. All the old ones are still in here as well. 
there are now have been moved under legacy 12D drainage pits and we can see there's some old BCC variants, um, some generic ones and some side entry pits as well. Okay, so we have done a bit of work on the um, restructuring of the symbols under this 12D drainage group which because it was getting becoming a bit unwieldy in version 11. So that's a, a bit of a summary now of um, the new features in version 12. I think I've covered everything there, yes. Moving on. Um, so we have seen on, we've already produced this um, sort of verification style or detailed drainage plan plot, uh, or at least we've run the drainage plan plot. I'd now like to be able to show you how you can quickly produce something to show to somebody else who may not have 12D. It might be your project manager, it might be your internal verifier, it might just be um, you know, someone who said, oh, we need to have a meeting about this uh, project, just spit out what you've got so far, and you've got five minutes to produce a quick drawing. Well, I'm gonna demonstrate the use of the quick sheet plot now to show you how you can very quickly produce um, something and get it out of 12D onto a PDF that can be sent to a printer or just email to someone and who might not have 12D and they can look at it and see what on earth you're talking about. So back to 12D for a moment. Um, and we're gonna assume now that our drainage plan plot has already been adjusted and it has in this case. Um, and look, you typically wanna show more than um, what we've got on the view at the moment. And I have been loving the new feature in version 12, the, um, the view favorites. If I click on the gold star here, the more I use it, the more I want to use it. Basically, I'm finding more and more uses for this and I've set up a few view favorites um, already. And I have one, uh, for instance, for while I'm designing, um, if I double click on this one, so I click on the gold star, hover right on favorites and double click on this one. And it basically uh, adds or revamps this view, it could potentially even rename the view, it, it removes certain models, adds other models, changes the background color sometimes, can do all sorts of things, change the size of the view. You can set them up for all different purposes. So this is the list of models I typically have while I'm designing, say with the network editor. And then when it comes time to produce the outputs, well, I wouldn't have this same list of models to send to the plotter or to, the, to, um, to uh, send it to a PDF. I typically would have a different list and so I've got a different view favorites and the one I'm going to go with here is this one called drainage plan plot verify and it's got an extension 12D VF plan, 12D view favorite plan. Double click on that one and it changes the appearance of my view. It gives it a paler background which is more akin to a white plotting sheet and it's got a different list of models here. I'm actually showing the contour strings rather than the tin which I produced a contour function in this project. Uh, my design strings, I've got a variant that are colored sort of pale gray so that they blend into the background. And I've also added my catchment models on here. These are the multicolored things here and catchment labels. Now these were already produced by the drainage network editor or at least they were colored and labeled. Uh, we actually have to, we still have to draw the polygons. Uh, and so they're technically not part of the drainage plan plot but they will end up on the drainage plan. Uh, and I've also added on my flooded widths and sag ponds. If I were to zoom in here, you can see the uh, cyan flooded widths going along the road. And this is post analysis, of course. You only get these after you've run the analysis in the rational method. Uh, and I can see the sag ponds there at my sag pits as well. So that looks like, uh, and then my catchment labels, the larger text in whites there. This is all gonna get run through a plotter mapping file just by way of explanation. What do all the different colors mean? The blue polygons there are my road catchments and they're 100% impervious. The yellow catchments are where I'm expecting lands to be developed and that they are set with, let's say my lots, my housing lots for instance, or some kind of development. They're set with 50% impervious and the green catchment polygons here are set with 0% impervious. In other words, fully vegetated catchments. So they all have different catchment characteristics and that's why I've broken it up into the different polygons. And visually, it's quite an easy way to see what's been assigned and what hasn't, what's contributing to the drainage um, flows and what isn't, and how much uh, is it contributing. 
okay? But to actually send this out to a plotter from this stage, the first step is to set up the favorite, and it's easy enough to do. There's options to, once you've got a view set up, you can save it away with this create edit favorites, uh, and then you can call it up and bring this list of models and this style um, exactly as you want it. But then we simply go to the plot button on the view, and there's an option here called quick sheet plot. And if you don't want to, you don't have to fill this panel in every time. I've actually gone through and saved one away as a screen layout file. And I can go to File, Layouts, Layout Input, Quick Sheet Plot, Drainage Verify. And that pops up the, uh, the uh, Quick Sheet Plot panel all filled in. So I no longer need this one. This one's filled into the way I want it. I want to use this particular plotter here, PDF color, string weight 50%. It's one of the plotters that you'll see in the PDF group there, and this one's a half-scale plotter because I'm, I'm actually plotting a lot of fine detail here. So even though I'm plotting to an A1 sheet at 1 to 500, I want the half-scale line weights because I'm trying to get a, cram a lot of detail in this. This one, is not a, this one is a verification plot, not a final design. So I'm trying to make the text probably a little too small than I really should to try and cram a lot more information onto the sheet here. But I'm using that one, which um, basically um, makes the line styles a little bit thinner. And if there's any strings already preset with weights, it will use that weight rather than the weight that's set in the plotter mapping file that's used by this plotter. Okay, and it's going to create a PDF file called drainageverify.pdf. It's set with a scale of 1 to 500. Um, and uh, plot margin there. I've, I've filled in a, a few details. This is only for a minimal title block, this quick sheet plot. Um, and it's a little bit hard to see the frame that's actually there. Uh, but you can use the uh, uh, rotate and translate icons down the bottom here. And it's a little bit hard to see. It's on a yellow background there. But I'll try and place this so that I can see what I want to see here. Basically, I'm trying to encapsulate um, all of the, um, say, the proposed system there. Not so much interested in the existing in this example. And that should do. So I've set my frame, and then I simply go ahead and hit the plot button, and it will go away and produce uh, a PDF, and it should pop up in just a few seconds. It's on my other monitor. Let me drag it over for you. And this is what it's produced. So it's a, uh, an A1 sheet, yeah, and that's what it looks like uh, at very thin margins. I probably could have made that thicker. But all of the orange um, and the white has been mapped to black pens, is the way the mapping file works. And if you zoom right in there, you can see it's quite high quality, um, the text, and it's all quite readable. A verifier could sort of set this to 150% and pan around and review the results and, and all of that, print it out, uh, to a printer, make red pen adjustments all over it, uh, and give it back to you. And it's, you know, in a few seconds, you can produce something uh, for your meeting or for your verifier or whatever. So that's a great option for producing a quick plot. Um, and we might want to take it a bit further than that, though. Uh, and so Rather than continue on with this PPF, the quite detailed one, I want to show you um, something else now. Uh, and that is saying, well, okay, that's the quick sheet plot. What about if we want to do something a bit more professional, say with a title block, maybe break it up into two sheets uh, and uh, something more for a final production. So it's past the verification stage. Let's go through and do something else with it. So. I'm going to close down that, um, that one. And again, I'm going to use one of my plan view favorites. And I've got another um, one here that sets up my view for a uh, final production plot. So that's drainage plan plot final. And this one, you can see I've set up a couple of plot frames here to say, and just for the sake of demonstration, uh, I've got two plot frames that have different rotations. Now, this is something that pops up frequently enough. And it does make the problem more challenging when you've got um, two different orientations uh, for each for the different sheets, or more than one potentially. So I've set up these uh, frames, a list of models there. The, the two plot frames are in this model called Frame A1500, and they've been pre-set up through the plot menu, 
under plot frames. There's options to create and modify um, plot frame objects with inside 12D and link them to um, title block files as well. Okay, uh, other than that, the only real difference is I've also got um, on the left hand side here, I've got this little text box that I wanted to add to the drawing that uh, details my um, structure naming convention and we'll have a look at that later. Uh, and that's in the model called drainage notes, DR notes. And my drainage labels aren't there yet. They're supposed to go into a model called drainage labels final plan, but it's an empty model. So we better produce something before we go any further. And to do that, I'm gonna go to the plot menu and plot and PPF editors, drainage plan. And I'm gonna load up, rather than the design one, I'm gonna load up the plan one, which I mentioned earlier, is the one that's, um, it's based off the one in the library that's installed with 12D. But this one is more for, if I look at the notes branch, it's a PPF for final plan drawings. It shows the structure names in bubbles and pipe sizes only. Okay, uh, a few other details there that I won't worry about. But basically it's set up to plot the model called drainage to this model drainage labels final plan. This one's got a global text factor of 2.5. Uh, so all the text I'm expecting to come out 2.5 millimeters on paper. And let's go ahead and plot it. And if I go and have a look there, I can see down the bottom there, um, everything's coming out in the same color as the original drainage string. So the magenta strings are plotting to magenta text labels. And I'm seeing these fairly stylized Queensland style um, structure bubbles where the structure name has actually been split into two pieces of text. And I've got an upper and a lower. Now that's not quite perfect yet. There's a few issues here. I'm gonna need to move some of these structure labels around because I've got overlapping text. Uh, and I might even need to rotate some of the structure labels. Uh, because I've got two different orientations, you typically want um, the structure bubbles to align with the bottom edge of the sheet. Uh, and they won't do so for this magenta frame, which is tilted 90 degrees to the left. Uh, we also have this troublesome area in the middle here that's common to both sheets. And that's where we kind of need to make a decision. Uh, but I've got a little, a uh, couple of little things to talk about to, as ways to fix this before we um, proceed. And we are going to tidy this up and actually get something that looks pretty good. And I'm going to show you the tools to do it. So the first thing to know about when you've got this overlapping text and trying to move things around is about the multi-string translate option. Now I show this all the time in my training courses and it's amazing to me how many people have never used it. It is found in the drafting uh, menu uh, and it's called multi-string translate. And when you bring up that option, it pops up this translate strings option. And it's a tiny little panel. And the thing that makes it really useful is this group button. Because you can click on that group button and then click on uh, any piece of individual text that was produced from the drainage plan plot. And those bits of text have been specially encoded with attributes that this group button knows about. So it can move um, a whole group of individual text strings en masse whenever you need to move them. Um, just quickly, I'll just jump back to 12D to show you how that works. If I go to drafting multi-string translate and click on the group button, I can zoom in uh, on say one of these text bubbles. And it's, when you're uh, moving these around, it's often best to turn off the point and line snap. I've got a lot of stuff on this screen here. Move one of these bubbles and I might select that one. And it moves not just the piece of text I selected, because this is actually three different elements here. There's the upper text, the lower text, and the symbol there. And it moves them at once because the, the group button has been specially programmed to look for um, elements in the same model that have specially encoded attributes. And the drainage plan plot does that. So that translate strings is a great one. You can move um, your bubbles around and start to uh, make things a little more readable. Typically you wanna move the structure bubbles out of the road reserve and, out, and outside so that they're a little bit more visible. And it's, there's a bit of art in there in terms of uh, drafting and avoiding clashing text and all of that sort of thing. But that's the idea of how the translate strings works. 
What works in unison with that is when you come to replot the next time, all that effort that you've gone to manually move things hasn't been wasted as long as you set in the PPF, set the clean plot model beforehand parameter to smart clean. And that mode is a special one that uh, maintains all your manual edits previously when you come and replot. So it might update the color or the, or the values of the text in the plot, but the position you've moved it to and the rotation angle will be maintained. It's automatically checking to see what text you've moved previously that's uh, into a different position from what the plot originally placed it in. So that smart clean is a good one to know about. Uh, and so in 12D, if I come back to the PDF editor, having moved those few labels there, and I've got the mode set to smart clean, it's on the main page of the PPF editor, I've set it to smart clean. If I set it to full clean, that would blow away all those movements I just made with the translate strings panel, and I'd be back to square one. But with smart clean, I can replot, and those positions are maintained. And had uh, other things changed, like pipe sizes or whatever, and I you know, could move the pipe size labels too if you need to. You generally don't need to move them too much. It's mainly the structure labels. Uh, but uh, if the pipe size had been moved, the pipe size label, and the pipe size had since been increased or decreased, the label would remain in the place where you moved it, but it would have the updated text showing the new size. So it's quite clever the way it works. Um, but this, that's only solving half the problem now. The other half of the problem is for um, uh, cases where you've got uh, rotated plot frames and especially where you've got multiple plot frames of different rotations. Now what we can do to get started, and I might just set it back to full clean for now, uh, we've got this plot rotation up our sleeves as well. And I'll just um, go through what I've written up on the slide there. Um, I'll come back to this one on structure name bubbles, but for multiple rotated plot frames, in the plot parameter file, set the plot rotation in degrees, minutes, seconds to the most common rotation angle of your plot frames. And this is to help avoid upside down text on each sheet because each sheet's got a different orientation in, in world space. There are some cases where people have lots of different plot frames with lots of different rotations and they've got a very demanding drafting standard where they do not tolerate uh, upside down text or text that might be you know, looking from the right rather than the left or vice versa. In those cases, um, it may be necessary to plot the drainage model multiple times to multiple plot models. So you'll have lots of different outputs from the drainage plot model uh, drainage plan plot, uh, and each one is set with a different plot rotation here. Uh, and then when it comes time to plot it, each for each sheet you plot the specific plot model for that rotation. That is a very heavy handed way of doing it, but in some cases it may be necessary to do it that way. I'm going to show you an alternative though. For my case I've got two sheets with that are 90 degrees apart, so it's still pretty difficult, uh, but I'm going to show you you can use the change text info panel, which I'll show you in just a sec. Uh, and you can chain it all up and automate this if you've got more than sort of a handful to do. Even if you've got just got one to do, it's worthwhile putting in a chain. Uh, and then replotting in smart clean because the, it's not just the, uh, the multi-string translate option that works with the smart clean. Any manual modification to the labels of the drainage plan plot works with that smart clean mode. So this is just another option to manip manipulate the output um, uh, and then replot in smart clean mode. So I'll jump back into uh, 12D again and I'll just minimize my uh, PPF. And the option I was talking about is under utilities H to Z text. And again, I've got a screen layout file of this panel. This is quite a useful panel um, to get the hang of. It's for manipulating text. Uh, I'm going to load up a screen layout file that has this pre-populated file layouts, layout input. Um, and it's called rotate sheet one labels to 90 degrees. That's what I named it. And it pops up the same panel, believe it or not, but all filled in. And this one is set to plot um, or process in the source box 
The details in the drainage plan plot model, the output model that we're using here, that's that one. Only those elements that are named structure star and every element in the drainage plan plot gets assigned a unique name. Uh, and all my structure text has got um, a code matching that. And further to that, I've got a, um, I'm limiting it. So it's only the structure labels in the drainage plan plot that are inside this little rectangle that I've drawn. I've drawn a string in this model called frame A1500 rect called one, which is for sheet one. And I'm saying everything inside this little rectangle I've drawn there, I want you to rotate or at least that matches all the other constraints. Okay, if I hit filter select there, it's highlighting 36 elements from one model. Uh, it's, it's not doing the catchment models, they've already been done, the catchment labels. It's just doing the drainage plan plot, but that's one particular option. And you can have a panel like this for every different sheet saying that I want to rotate this and all you need to do is down in the new box down here, set to say I want all of this text to have a particular angle and that angle is based on the rotation of the sheet frame. In this case, it's 90 degrees. I'm not bothering to do this one um, because I've set my plot rotation to zero uh, and this plot frame is already at zero. So I don't need to rotate that one. But the way, if you'd set your plot rotation to say 45 degrees, then you'd probably want to rotate both, but that would be a pretty odd thing to do. So that's how I would recommend using this panel. So the, I'm just on the new box, clear everything out and just specify the angle of whatever angle your plot frame wants for whatever rectangle you've chosen. Um, and then just go ahead and hit the convert button. And that's, if I zoom in now, that's now it's done something odd. It's rotated the text, um, but, and it's now outside the bubble and the bubble hasn't rotated. Well, that one's not so bad. Remember, we've got the smart clean mode. So back in the PDF editor, I'll swap this back to smart clean now. Now, the bubbles, I can tell you, uh, are based off, um, or they will always orient themselves to where you've moved the um, structure name text. And in the case of this upper lower one that I'm using, the Queensland standard, it's based on the upper location of the text and the symbol needs to work with that one. But if I come back and set it to smart clean and go plot, that automatically resolves itself. And I've rotated just those labels within the uh, sheet one frame and not the ones on the sheet two frame. Okay. Um, now I could go through uh, now with my um, Uh, under drafting multi-string translate, I could go through and start moving all the other bubbles as well. And it would probably take me a few minutes and I don't really want to bore you with uh, what, having you watch me do um, some drafting. I'm not the world's best drafter in the world. So I'm going to um, just to, to actually show you what it looks like when it's all done. I'm going to take a little shortcut here and revert to a model that I've prepared earlier. So basically it's just cutting out two minutes of work or whatever to move all these labels where I want them. I've got a little chain in here called Razzle Dazzle that makes it all pretty basically. Uh, so I've just run that chain there from my recalc menu uh, and now all my uh, bubbles are where I want them and, and uh, any other bits of text I've moved around as well. Not that much modification really. And I'm now ready to send this to the plotter. And because I've got plot frame set up to do this, I'm going to use the plot frame PPF editor. Um, now, I could at this stage come back and replot again if I wanted to make any modifications, and that's fine. It's going to simply reuse any locations that have been manually moved. Like so, and that hasn't really changed anything. All, everything's still where I want, where, where we want it. But to actually get this out to a um, plotter, I'm going to use the plot frame PPF editor. Now I have missed a couple of, I missed a slide before which I want to come back to, but I will come back to that one. Um, under plot, plot and PPF editors, plot frames, I've got a, um, a plot frame PPF here called drainage plan final. 
I'll hit the read button. And the plot frame PPF editor is actually one of the simple ones. It is set up with a title block and a drawing register and all of that as well. But basically I'm saying I want to plot this model of plot frames, which is these two frames here, the, the magenta and the blue frame. I want to plot them to PDF using this plot plotter, which is a full scale plotter, uh, using this plot naming stem, plot file naming stem. Uh, and I'm going to use the plan view favorite here. So in truth, I don't actually need this view uh, to be around because um, I'm plotting the plan view favorite because I'm specifying rather than plotting a view, I'm plotting the view favorite. Um, and really all I need to do at this point is go ahead and hit the plot button. And it's going to go and produce two more sheets for me and on top of my verification plot. In just a second, I'll start seeing uh, plot sheet one, which is the one that's rotated 90 degrees. You can see the north arrow is pointing to the right there. And it's also got a scale bar and all of this information in the title block is coming through from the drawing register, which I've, I'm not going to bother showing. There's, it's also, there's the text box showing my structure naming convention. Uh, and if I zoom in there, I can see the, the bubbles have all been rotated to orient with the rotation of this particular plot frame. If I move over to sheet two, I can see again, this one was uh, rotated or wasn't rotated, it's north up, all the same sort of information in the title block there. And this one has all the bubbles um, sort of oriented with the plot frame with the exception of where we had the overlap between sheet one and sheet two. So these ones you can see the bubbles are on their side. Now I don't know if, uh, how, if, if that is a problem for people, if that doesn't meet people's drafting standards, I think the only option when you've got overlaps is to have multiple output models where each model is plotted with a different orientation. Uh, and that's easy enough to do, but it is more work and it's, it's probably a more heavy handed way. So it depends on what's going to be deemed acceptable or not uh, in your drafting standards. But these are the sorts of things you can do. Now just on the, on the bubbles there, you can see of, of this particular PPF is set up with the Queensland style, the upper lower style of bubbles. But just back on the PowerPoint, this is the slide I skipped earlier. Just a little note on how to do the bubbles. If you go to the manhole name bubbles branch under maintenance holes, um, for example, if you're interested in the left hand side here, which is what we've been doing, set the bubble mode to upper lower symbol and set the bubble symbol name to, that's what this symbol is, the, the circle with a line through it is called pit name bubble TMR. I believe the style came from the um, traffic and main roads department in Queensland. On the right hand side you'll see a style of bubbles that's perhaps more commonly seen in other parts of the world and it doesn't necessarily have to be this pill shaped thing. Uh, it may have um, uh, any symbol shape you like but in this example I've set the bubble mode to symbol rather than the upper lower symbol and I've set the bubble symbol name to this one that we ship in the library called bubble uh, pit name bubble narrow. There's another one in there that's wider for long pit names, but you can use whatever symbol you like there. Um, whatever, uh, just a, a note on that though, whatever um, text scale you're using, if you're using paper scale text, you should use a paper scale symbol. If you're using world scale text, you should use a world scale symbol. Okay, so that's a little bit about the structure bubbles as well. I won't uh, actually do a demo, I'm running a bit short on time now. So just to finish off then, I've just talked a little bit about the multiple plot rotated plot frames. And here's just a little summary of that last step we did in producing those two A1 um, drainage plans, including the catchment plans there. Uh, they're both at one to 500 and they've got different rotations on them. And they were produced with both the drainage plan plot together with the plot frame PPF editor. And yes, it's the plot frame PPF is set up with a title block populated from an Excel drawing register and it includes a scale bar and a north arrow. Now I've already done uh, webinars that cover those details. So I'd encourage you to go back to YouTube and have a look at the recordings of those if you'd like to see how that's done. But I think I'd better wrap it up now uh, and open up the webinar to any questions and answers. Thanks Owen. Um, yes, we've had quite a few questions through. What I think I might do, there's a few that seem to be related to pits, so I might just read them all out to you. So 
if there's a way of combining the answers or something, then we're not um, not okay. going back over the same thing. Um, so Ben in Adelaide would like to know how do we create our own pit symbols. Um, okay. We've also had Darren in Sydney said, we usually need to colour existing and proposed pipes differently so they come out on road alignment section drawings in the correct colour. Is there a way of specifying colours in the drainage.4Ds so that when we hit set pit details, it changes them all to the correct colours? Okay, I'll answer that one now. That one's yep. a bit unrelated. Um, at the moment, you can't set it in the drainage.4D, the colour, but I believe it has been requested for version 14. Great. Um, it would be a welcome addition, but at the moment you can uh, go through the network editor and set individual pits and pipes to whatever colours you like. And that's how I've done it in my example where I have the multicoloured strings there. That's that one. As to how to create the symbols, if I go to the maintenance holes branch here, this is where you set the symbols. And, uh, you know, under the 12D drainage branch, basically where I would start here is to say, look in one of our PPFs that are all set up and there's nothing like a good example. So for example, if you wanted to see, if I zoom right in here, how did we produce a symbol like this orange thing here with the lintel and, and so forth? Um, it, it would be under pits and it would be one of these um, G2Ls. Now, how to edit a symbol, um, if I click on edit there, that brings up, so let me go through that again. I right clicked on the symbol um, box in the, in the grid here and clicked on edit in square brackets and that brought up the symbol create edit. And if I wanted to just um, have a look at what that is, I could go to edit mode, click on the symbol. Again, I'll burrow down onto 12D drainage pits. Let's pick the first one there, G2L. It's an on grade pit. And it's coming up, it's saying it's in this group name here, it's named G2L, it's a world symbol. Now all your pit symbols, if you wanted to plot them to scale, they should typically be world symbols. Okay, and so you draw them in world coordinates and you set them to world scale. And you can dump this out to a model if you want, you could, I might call it symbol um, G2L. Write out the symbol there. And it's also important to note these settings here. There's an, um, it's got a not, it's got an origin at um, zero one, and it's got a length of one. Now that length factor there, it's got a bit of an esoteric explanation what it means. But for world scale pit symbols, I would always have that length set to one. It means that if you draw your symbol in its true dimensions, then when you come to add that symbol in the plot, you set the size to one and it gives you the true world scale. And if you set the size to two, it'd be double that and so forth. So you don't want to have to sort of uh, specify a size of 2.4 meters for the length of this lintel, say. You just want to set the size to one for all these so that they come out in their native size. And that's what that setting the length of one is. But anyway, I, I think I wrote that out. I'll do it if I haven't. And I can open that onto a new view. It's called symbol. G2L, and that's all it is. That is just 2D line work, um, and the centre there is at uh, zero one in, co in XY space. It's just 2D strings. Whatever you draw, you can draw it up in CAD, uh, and you can come and convert that into a symbol there. So the one trick I would say um, for creating your own symbols in 12D, uh, for pits at least, is that the flow direction, in this case, this is a left entry pit and the flow is coming from left to right there. The flow direction for the pit should be in the positive X direction because that is the mathematical zero angle that we use in 12D. And it is a trick I've seen when people are converting AutoCAD blocks into 12D pit symbols. The trick there is rotate the blocks by 90 degrees because they're all pointing north where ours are pointing east. So rotate all your blocks in AutoCAD by 90 degrees, then you can read a DWG containing all those blocks and they will be automatically converted to symbols for you and you won't even need to use this panel at all. That is another way of doing it, but you'd need to rotate the symbols coming from AutoCAD first. So I hope that's uh, a little bit of a, a crash course in creating symbols. Um, but yeah, my 
the first step is start with a good example and go looking for the PPFs that we install with 12D and see how we've done it and try and do something similar to that uh, in, in that because there are a few little uh, weird and wonderful settings to do with symbols that unless you go into the depths of reading the reference manual, they're not necessarily straightforward, but well, there's nothing like a good example. Thanks, Owen. I um I know we're getting quite close to time, but we've had so many um so many questions through. I might just read out a couple more. Um, okay. So Martin in Perth, uh, oh no, this was pipe related um, here. So we'll see. So it says, is it possible in V12 or future versions to produce a pipe call out text box on each pipe in the drainage plot? Yeah, there has been discussion on that, and in fact, we have got the rudiment, rudiments of separate macros to do stuff like this. It hasn't yet been embedded into the drainage plan plot um, and we might need a little bit more detail on exactly how to do it because there's, uh, the, there's probably been five or six people who've asked for this sort of thing and they've all asked for slightly different things and we're not quite sure how to specify it yet in general. Uh, but certainly if you get in contact with me, uh, I can um, start, uh, show you what we've got so far in terms of these sort of uh, prototype macros for getting this sort of job done. Sure. Well, um, we'll send through, I'll send you a summary of these questions after the webinar so you'll have yep. details for, um, yeah, to contact people with that information. That'll be great. I um, take this one here. So um, Dave in Brisbane said, can you show me how to use the PPFs that plot the normal and critical flow depths and the HGL in 3D. Yeah, okay, that, that's fun. These are ones that uh, not many people ever bother with. They're, they're pretty, they're kind of interesting. I find them interesting. Um, but if I browse to the library, and these, this is the list I showed earlier of all the ones installed with 12D. Say for instance, the, um, the critical depth and the normal depth. I'll choose the critical one and hit the read button and I'll change that to the my drainage model DR and I'm just going to plot it out to this drainage pipe depth critical. Go ahead and hit plot. Okay, so that's just without showing you anything about what this PPF is set up to do, I'm just going to go and run it and I've got a new model in there called drainage pipe depth critical. I'll do the same thing for the normal depth. So browse to the library, choose the drainage depth norm, hit the read button change the input model to my drainage model name and the output model is drainage pipe depth normal and plot. So, And there's another one in there for the hydraulic grade line but I'm not going to do that one just yet because if I bring up my, uh, what's that, that's, I don't need that, and I don't need that and I don't need that, bear with me. I've got a drainage section view here uh, and I might just revert my plan view back to the um, design mode. And I'm looking at my ma uh, a, a um, section here through, or a long section profile of my main proposed longitudinal line here. So this, this part here that ends up tying down into my existing down here. Okay, now onto this section view, those two new models I just produced, I can add on to the corridor of this section view uh, and potentially to a section plot as well. And they were lowercase d, weren't they? There they are, add. And if I zoom in there, I can see I've got a red line and a green line. Now I can tell you if you, you I won't go back to the PPS, but the green line, if I click on it, it'll tell me, I've turned my point and line snap off. Turn it back on. The green line is the normal depth and the red line is the critical depth. And what that means is when one's above the other, uh, it tells you whether your pipe is potentially able to flow super critical or not. Or in other words, whether it's a flat pipe or a steep pipe. It's getting into the nerdy business of hydraulics, but it's the sort of thing you can do. Um, uh, uh, with the drainage plan plot because it's got the ability to plot um, the pipes at whatever levels you specify. Back to the PPF editor, which I've closed down. Um, let's say this one. Uh, under the pipes branch, there is one setting here that basically specifies what levels you want 
on your pipe annotations. And uh, most of them use pipe inverts, but you can specify the obverts or the cover levels or the hydraulic grade line, the normal and critical depth, or you can just set it to zero. So this is what makes the drainage plan plot. This one parameter here, this is what makes it potentially a 3D plotter by being able to specify what levels you want on your pipe annotations. Okay, so hopefully that one answers that one. Thanks for that, Owen, and thanks to everyone for your questions. I think Owen's going to be very busy by email um, for the next few days. Sorry to anyone we couldn't answer live, but we'll just um, yeah, have to leave it for time today. But thank you also to everybody who typed in so quickly to let me know that you could see the screen because that really helps us to keep things on track. The recording of this webinar will be available in coming days through our website and our YouTube channel. Our next two training webinars are pad and lot grading on the 7th of March and 12D model design absolute basics on the 14th of March. So feel free to sign up for those through our website or recommend them to friends and colleagues. We'll keep you posted on those and more through email and social media if you're subscribed. If you need to contact us in the meantime, um, you can go to our website. And that concludes our presentation for today. Thank you all for attending and we hope to see you at future webinars.